Hello, hello, hello. You are welcome to SHS Revision R on Joy Learning TV. Thanks so much for making time for today's lesson. Today we are looking at core mathematics. And this program is prepared specially for final year students preparing for your 2022 um, West Africa examination. And today I receive your facilitator for today. And as usual, even though I'm not physically present with you, I know you have your books, your pens, your calculators, very important because today's lesson, you are going to do more of calculator work because some of these sign ratios, costs and stuff, we need to get calculator to assist us in doing that. So get your calculator ready, get your notebook and your pen and your pencils ready, and then let's move on to today's lesson. And remember, this is a revision show. And because it's a revision show is something that we've done before, we are trying to revise our knowledge on. And by the end of today's section, you should be able to revise your knowledge on the properties of right angle triangle. We revise our knowledge on the deduction of the values of special angles in trigonometry. And then we'll also be looking at trigonometric ratios and the quadrant at which they become positive or negative. Then we'll solve general questions involving size and angles of right angle triangles. So these are some of the things we are going to look at by the end of today's lesson. Bear in mind that this program is live. And it's also live on YouTube. YouTube on Joy Learning TV. And when you go to Facebook, Joy Learning TV, you get this show live. And so you can call your friends who are not at home to have their television set. They can still go ahead and watch this program on YouTube and on Facebook as well. And so now let's look at um, the concept of trigonometry. It's a revision, but then I'll build some few concepts for you to understand the basis. And so we can continue with whatever you're supposed to do today. Now, this is a question that I have for you. Is it possible to measure the height of this tower without using or without climbing it or use tape measure. You see this is a very long tower. Is it possible you can measure it without climbing to the peak of it? Well, it's possible. And we can do that by the help of um, trigonometry. And if you look at this instrument, this instrument, I just brought them to let you know that if you get any of these instruments, you can measure angles of elevation. And when you measure angles of elevation with this clinometer or inclinometer or the rest that we have here, we can, with the help of these materials and rulers or tape measures, we can take some quite distance and measure angles of elevation. And when you're able to get the angle of elevation, that is the theta, we'll be able to use right, um, our trig ratios and then we can know the height of this very tower. And that is what I want to understand. It's possible we can measure without climbing with the help of trigonometry. What is trigonometry? A very big question. Um, some of this topic seems to be quite strange. If not for secondary school, we didn't even hear it from primary or GHS. And we want to know what trigonometry simply means. From the onset, we'll say that trigonometry is derived from two Greek words. Trigonon and metron. Trigonon and metron. Now, when we talk of trigonon, trigonon simply means triangle. Trigonon, tri, three, so triangle. And metron also means measure. So what is trigonometry? Triangle, measure. What is trigonometry then? So I'm sure you can tell the answer. If trigonon come, trigonometry comes from the word trigonon and metron, and we are saying triangle and measure, and we are to put this together, what are we going to learn here? What then? Is trigonometry and we can put these two together and say um, when trigonal means triangle and metron means measure we therefore says that we are dealing with the measurement of triangles and the relationship relationship among the size of a triangle and angles of a triangle so basically we are going to look at triangle in general and then we want to look at the relationship that this size of triangles and their respective angles, what sort of relationship they have. 
you know, triangle is a very powerful um, plane shape or plane um, geometric figure, which helps us a lot in construction. And so engineers, scientists, mathematicians need to work more on this triangle stuff. And so they can build a lot of stuff for us. So the whole idea of trigonometry is to measure size, measure angles of a triangle. Why do we have to study triangle, oh, sorry, trigonometry in the first place? This is so important. This topic is so important. Where can we see the learning of trigonometry? I mean, which area or which field of, of, of work can we see the use of trigonometry? Number one is development of astronomy. Those who study stars, who go to the moon and then all the stuff, I mean, they need trigonometry concept in order to see from far. And so um, astronomy, um, surveying, navigation, people do a lot of trick work. Those who work under the submarine, I mean, those on the sea, I mean, since they want to travel under the sea to know what is going there, they can even tell the distance from here to the sea or down the sea, they can tell the distance because they're able to use um, trigonometric concepts to calculate distances and stuff. Now, when we come to music industry, we need trigonometry. Surprise? Yeah. Music, since we have this sinusoidal curves and we have amplitudes and we have frequency in musical instruments, we need trigonometry to calculate that. If you look at this formula here, that is trigonometric formula, right? And sine and cos and the rest, it means that trigonometry is not only for just learning in classroom. Building musical instruments, you need the concept of trigonometry. Even with video games that we play, you see, when we are playing, you won't see the trigonometry there. But those who built the I mean, the, 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 the whole machine or the game, they need trigonometry. So I know some of you find yourself in industry, in manufacturing companies where you are going to build some of these things. You realize that, Charlie, the topic that you did in school is very important. You need it over there as well. All right, that is. The reason why we have to learn this concept or this topic in secondary school. When you go to the university, you can build on that and you can do more for yourself. In trigonometry, angles are measured in degrees. Very important. Angles are measured in degrees and in an anti-clockwise direction. Very important to take note of this because when we are dealing with trigonometry, we deal with angles. And when we are dealing with vectors and bearings, which we've already taken that course already, we also deal with angles and we deal with measurement. So we learned from bearings, that was our last meeting, we learned that in bearings, angles are taken from North Pole clockwise. But then when we talk of the um, compass bearing, that's where we look at the clockwise and anti-clockwise, and we can also look at it in terms of south. But then in trigonometry, angles are measured from the x-axis as the origin, and we move anti-clockwise, direction anti-clockwise direction and our angles are measured between the range of zero degrees and 360 we could go beyond that but for now we want to look at range of three zero to 360. not only that angles can also be measured in radians can be measured in radians so we have radians so that one to from the zero we go up to two pi two pi radians so 2 pi is equivalent to 360 degrees, and 0 degrees is equivalent to 0 um, radian. And when you take 90 degrees, 90 degrees is the same as um, 1 fourth, sorry, it's um, half pi, it's 90 degrees, half pi. But those of you who are doing relative math, you have to study more into radians, and you do a lot of calculations in radians. Now, we said that the whole concept of trigonometry has to do with triangles. That's what we learned, right? We say it's triangle. That's what we, 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 we talked about. But then, even though we're talking about triangle in general, we will specifically look at right angle triangle. Right angle triangle. Now, we are looking at that because it has to do with our ratios that we are going to study. And so we're dwelling more on right angle triangle. In advanced form of trigonometry, when you're doing it in relative mass, you look at other types of triangles. 
but they'll also be looking at maybe an equilateral triangle and um, a socialist right angle triangle. Now, when I draw this diagram and I ask you what type of triangle is this, probably you just quickly say that it's a um, right angle triangle because it looks like the angle here is 90. It looks like, but you can't be very sure until I tell you that it is 90 degrees. So when I, when I tell you that this particular angle here is 90 degrees, then we can call this right angle triangle. So by definition, we say a right angle triangle is a triangle that has one of its interior angles to be 90 degrees. That makes it a right angle triangle. And if it is a right angle triangle, then the opposite side of the right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse. So this side is called the hypotenuse. So you can see the hypotenuse as a red line here is your hypotenuse. And it's always the longest side of the right angle triangle. Always the longest side of right angle triangle. And if you remember Pythagoras theorem, which we've done the revision of that here before, we saw that in Pythagoras theorem, the longest side square should be equal to the sum of the two other side squares. We learned that. And so that is that. Now, if one side here is called, um, if the side here is um, hypotenuse, then what is the name of this side and what is the name of that side as well? Some students will conclude and tell you that this is the opposite and this is the adjacent. No, that is not true. When we pick right angle triangle, the only side that is known is the hypotenuse. The other two sides, we just call them the size, the other size. But then, if you have right angle triangle like this, okay, and you make a reference to one of the interior angles, like maybe theta that we have, you can see on the screen, then we'll say that the opposite side of the theta is this side. This is the opposite side. Then down here becomes the adjacent side of the theta. And so the name adjacent and opposite comes when we make reference to a particular angle. If the angle comes up here, and here becomes theta, then this becomes the opposite, and that becomes the adjacent. So be careful what you call your opposite and what you call your adjacent. Right. So if you look at this one too, you can see that if the theta is here, then our opposite side becomes this. And then the other side becomes the adjacent. And these terms are very important for us. The opposite, the adjacent, the hypotenuse is what we are going to use throughout today's lesson. So take note of what we call the opposite of the angle and what we call the adjacent of the angle and then the hypotenuse. Right. So we are going to look at trigonometric ratios. Trigonometric ratios. Because we are dealing with angles and we are dealing with um, size of a triangle, we want to look at some of the um, terms we can use to measure angles and size. So let's have a right angle triangle labeled ABC. So we have B centimeters, A centimeters, and C centimeters. And we have one reference angle here called theta. Now take note, if theta is given here, no matter the value we take as theta, then the other side of it also becomes an angle that must be complement to the theta. Remember that we learned in plane geometry one that the sum of interior angles of every triangle is 90, 180 degrees. Sorry, 180 degrees. So if this is 90 degrees, then the remaining two angles must be automatic 90 degrees. Like when you sum the two together, it's 90. And when two angles sum up together, we call them complementary angles. Remember that. So we are going to use this ratio, the sine, the tangent, and then the complement of the sine. Sine, complement of sine. The complement of sine is what we call the cosine. Complement of sine, cosine. Because the two of them must always, their values must always add up to 90. So the sine value, it complement is the complement of sine, which is the cosine. And all these are just simply the ratio 
or dividing one side by the other to get the angle. So they are simply one side of a right angle triangle divided by the other. And so let's go deeper into the definition of this ratio. Now let's make a reference to another right angle triangle having our side A, B, and C with one reference angle here as theta. Now, if I want to measure the value of theta, I want to know the value of theta. I know here to be 90 degrees. So I want to know what value this angle will be. If I want to know the value of theta, then what I have to do is, I have to measure the side which is opposite the theta, measure it, and know the length. Divided by the measurement of the hypotenuse, which is the C. If you divide the opposite side by the hypotenuse side, the result will be the sine of the angle theta. And so we can say sine is B over C, according to this diagram. Or we can say the opposite side of the triangle over the hypotenuse side. So if my triangle happened to be like this, happened to be like this, this is the right angle triangle. And I put theta here, and here is 3, here is 4. Then I will say, and let's say here is 5. I can say theta can be defined in terms of sine. As sine theta is equal to opposite side of the angle, which is the 4, divided by the hypotenuse side, which is 5. If I divide this, or I take the ratio of this, the result will be the sine of the angle theta. That is what it means. So if I want to define the theta by cos, or the complement of sine, then I will measure the adjacent side here and divide it by the hypotenuse side. And that will give me the sine. And if I want to divide or find this, the theta using the tangent, or the tan theta, again, I will do opposite over adjacent. And this is very very important. We can apply this concept in angles of elevation and depression. We can apply this concept in bearings. Last week, remember we did bearings and we're solving bearing questions using Sokatwa. There are a lot of topics we have in math that the basis comes to this particular concept. And most students struggle with it. And so I'm trying my best, even though it's a revision, to build the concept very well so that you study this once and for all. And I know it will come in this year's exams and you get it and get it well. Right, so how do we remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, tan is uh, opposite over hypot uh, adjacent? How do I remember? That's why we have this acronym, SOCATWA, SOCATWA. And I'm sure this acronym is known to almost every student, even those at the GHS, they still hear so and they say, what is that thing? They know, they hear it, but as to what it means, they don't know. But now that you are in secondary school, I'm sure now you know what Sokatwa means. Sokatwa simply means that if I'm to define the angle by sine, I'll only divide the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. And if I'm to divide it by I'm supposed to find the angle by the cos or the cosine, I will say adjacent over hypotenuse. And the same thing, if I want to define the angle by tan, I will say the opposite over the adjacent side. So if I'm able to take these ratios, I will get the value of the angle. So apart from these fundamental ratios that we talked about right now, we have other ratios which e mass to the, or those who are doing elective mass, they study into it. I mean, they do more of that. But since I'm doing core math, I wouldn't go detailed. I would just mention them to you. So we have what we call the second, cosecant, and then the cotangent. They are additional ratios that we use in doing calculations, complex calculations, as far as trigonometry is concerned. Now, what is second? Second simply means take the cost and reciprocate it. The result will give you the sec theta. So if I want to know the angle in terms of sec or the second, I will just take cos and I'll reciprocate it and then I'll get my second. And if I want to do the same thing for cos second, I'll just reciprocate the, um, the sign and I'll get cos second. 
And the same thing applies to if I want the cotangent, which we call the cot. Cot theta. Cot theta simply means 1 over tan theta. And that, so these are the additional ratios that we use in solving questions in trigonometry. And like I said, those of you who are doing elective maths, I'm sure you are familiar with that. Now, the few things we've done right now, let's see how we can apply them in solving questions. So I'll take maybe one or two examples, then we progress to the next subtopic. When we are done, I'll open the phone line for you, I'll populate more questions for you to solve, then you tell me your answer. Remember we have problem of the day, which has already been given out on our social media. And I'm sure, I'm sure you, you, you know about that, right? So now let's take a few examples. Let's take a few examples. Example number one. We have this triangle here. And we want to find the value of the side marked X in the diagram. Side marked X. So look at the triangle. And this is a right angle triangle. Now we have our angle theta given, which is 60 degrees. We don't know the side BC. We don't know. But the question wants us to just find the side X, which we don't, that is a, the adjacent side of the angle theta. So what do we do? Good. Now, we have to remember our Sokatua. Very important. I have an angle theta. I have the side here called the hypotenuse. And I have the side here called adjacent. So I have adjacent and I have hypotenuse. Okay. And I want to find the adjacent. So it means that I need a ratio that will help me, or that has adjacent and hypotenuse in it. And we know of our so ka -tua. Which of these ratios has both adjacent and hypotenuse? And that is ka cos. It means that I can define this angle cos theta, which is 60, as Opposite, sorry, sorry, adjacent, rather, which is um, x divided by hypotenuse, which is 12. So I can solve for the value of x. This becomes a simple equation, right? And I want to make x the subject. Change of subject comes in here. You see that topic is being applied here. So how do we make x the subject? We can do what we call cross multiplication. You know, cos theta can be written as, sorry, cos theta can be written as cos theta over 1. So when I do cross multiplication, x will multiply 1 as x, and then 12 will multiply cos 60 as 12 cos 60. Now, for now, we'll use our calculator to do the cos 60. But then in future, in the course of our lesson, I will teach you how to find cos 60 without using calculator. Right. We look at how to find cos 60 without using calculator. And so cos 60 is half. You can put that on your calculator and see. Just type cos 60, and you see that the answer will come as half. Then the half times 12 will give you 6. And so for the x centimeters, our answer will give us 6 centimeters. And that is the answer for the value of x. You see, it's very simple. So in future, if you ask me to find, let's say, y, which is the BC, length BC, I will say that, okay, now that I know my hypotenuse and I want to find BC, and the BC serves as opposite to the angle, I will start by saying sine 60 is equal to, sine 60 is equal to, now what do I have? Sine says so, so opposite side, which is y, I don't know, over hypotenuse side, which is 12. And once again, I will do cross multiplication and I will say y is equal to 12 sine 60. And again, you can use your calculator to do sine 60, then you multiply by 12, and that will give you your answer. Now let's continue. Let's take another example. Now I've got my tower again. I want to know the height of this tower to the nearest meter. Knowing very well that the angle of elevation, if I'm to view from the ground to the top of the tower, the angle of elevation is 40 degrees. That will be our next topic after today. Our next meeting for commerce, it will be part two. 
and the part two is going to be purely angles of elevation and depression. You will love to watch that lesson because it's going to be fantastic. Some of you I know that has been your major headache. But trust me, if you continue watching from Joy Learning TV, you get everything that you need. I mean, you'll be able to overcome your challenges. Now, how do we know the height of this? Knowing the distance from the base to the observer's eye here to be 68 meters. And then the angle is given. So I want to know the height. Maybe let me call the height H. Okay, let me call the height H. So now the height H represents opposite to the angle. So I know I need opposite. Then the 68, which is known, represents the adjacent side of the angle. And so I know of adjacent. So which of this ratio contains opposite and adjacent? So when you pick again your so ka twa, which of them will have that? And that is twa, right? So you can start by saying tan 40 degrees is equal to opposite. That is so opposite over adjacent. And opposite to this angle is H over adjacent 68. Then you do your cross multiplication again. And you have your H to be equal to 68 times tan 40 degrees and calculator can do the rest for you so you punch 68 tan 40 and your result will come as 57 point something but the question says to the nearest whole number or meter and that will give you 57 good you're making progress right let's look at the next subtopic well, I, well, i'll bring more questions on this as you progress when i open the phone line i'll give you more questions to solve so let's look at inverse of trig ratios. Inverse of trig ratios. If there's cosine of an angle, let's say cosine of a particular angle is equal to 0 0.5, how do I know the value of the angle? The value of the angle. And the value of the angle, I'm going to do what we call sine inverse, sorry, cos inverse. And so I'll take the cos inverse of 0 0.5 on your calculator you can do your cost inverse all you need to do is you press shift or second function and then you press the cost it will give you the symbol cost inverse like this cost inverse with negative one as the exponent cost inverse and when you type cost inverse of 0 0.5 your result will come at 60 degrees and so the actual value of theta is 60 degrees. We are going to apply this in solving questions. Okay? Let's apply this in solving questions. Now, before we continue, warning. And the warning is this. 1 over cos theta is not the same as cos inverse of theta. In indices, we know that if you have 1 over a, it gives us a to the power neg 1. And we can refer that as an inverse. If I have 1 over 2, it's the same as 2 to the power neg 1. But when we come to trigonometry and we see 1 over cos, it's not the same as cos inverse. Sorry, it's not the same as cos raised to the power negative 1 of that. They are not the same. I want to give you an assignment. Put a value here, let's say 60. And put a value here, say 60. And do 1 over cos 60. Write the answer down. Do cos inverse of 60 you see you get two separate answers. So that means they're not the same. Good. Now let's take an example and see how we can apply the cost inverse in solving questions. Let's take a question like this. Question one. We have um, an airplane trying to land. Okay. And its angle of depression, or let me say the angle that is coming down with in reference to the base, which of course will be angle of elevation for an observer who is down here, is theta. Hypotenuse is given to us. Opposite of that angle is given to us. We want to find the value of the angle of elevation that we can see the face of the plane from the ground. How do we do that? We can do this easily. Because we want to find theta, what and what do we have in the question? We have opposite here. 
we have hypotenuse here, we have opposite and hypotenuse. Which of the ratios goes with opposite and hypotenuse? Which is so, so sine. So, so we start by saying sine, sine theta is equals to opposite, which is 40,000 divided by hypotenuse, which is 100,000. You do your simple calculation, you are going to get sine theta is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 2 on 5. That is dividing here by 2. And here also divide by 2, give us 5. Sorry, 5. Then what we want to do now is to find sine inverse. Sine inverse of the 2 on 5. So calculator is there for us. You pick your sine inverse of 2 on 5 or 2 fifths. And then when you do that on the calculator, your answer will come as 24 to the nearest degree. It will give you some decimals, but you leave your answer to the nearest degree. And that is 24 degrees. Good. Let's take example two. Maybe you can try your hand on it and see. You want to find the angle marked X. Okay, in this right angle triangle, you know the side 11, another one, other side is 23. 23 represent what? 11 represent what? You can try it. So, 23 is H. And 11 also represent the adjacent side of the angle, which is A. So, so katua. So, ka. So, we need ka. We need cos. Cos of X. And the angle is X. Remember? So cos of S is equal to K means adjacent side, which is 11, divided by the hypotenuse side, 23. Then we can say, okay, because we want to find X, we take the cos inverse of 11 over 23. And that will give us the answer. So with your calculator, you can do cos inverse of 20, 11 over 23, and the result will come as 61.43 degrees. Here they didn't tell us to leave, us, leave it to the nearest degree, so we leave our answer the way we want it. Either in nearest degree or two decimal places or one decimal places. But normally in exams, when they don't give you the number of decimal places to leave your answer, try to leave it in three, four decimal places. So that in case you have to use that same value to solve additional questions, your answer will not be distorted so much. Now let's take another subtopic before we go for break. Let's look at this last subtopic here. Then we'll go for break and we'll come back. Now, angles and quadrants. Angles and quadrants. We know what an angle is. That is in plane geometry. We've done that already. Talk of quadrants, we had it also in plane geometry. Plane geometry 2. Under circle theory, we talked about quadrants. What is quadrant? As far as this course is concerned, Talk of quadrant, we are trying to divide a circle into four equal parts. Four equal parts. It will give us four quadrants. It's quadrant because the interior angle here is 90 degrees. Remember, this is a sector, right? The whole of this area is a sector. And every sector having the central angle to be 90 degrees is called quadrant. So quadrant is a sector with a central angle of 90 degrees. Now, we want to label this quadrant. We call the first part here, the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. As for this labeling, it's fixed. You can't change it. Everywhere you go, that's how we label it. First, second, third, fourth. So you can't make your first come here and your second come here. No, it can't be done that way. Everywhere you go, your first is this region, second, this region, Third, this region. Fourth, that region. How do we use this one in our trigonometric lesson? Now, if you pick these four quadrants, you see that each of the quadrants starting from the zero here to 90, then to 180, then to 270, and then 360. You realize that if you pick values between 0 and 90. Observe values between 0 and 90. Okay? 
between zero and 90, realize that each of the sign ratios, if you use them to calculate the value, let's say 30 degrees, 40 degrees, you see that sine of 40 gives you positive value. Tan of 40 gives you positive and cos also gives you positive. All right? Very, very important. No matter the angle between 0 and 90, 89, 39, 40, 60, all the three ratios will give you positive, positive, positive. All right. So that is very important. Take note of that. Okay. So in the first quadrant, we are saying that only, sorry, all of them are positive. Now, if we travel beyond the first quadrant and we enter into the second quadrant and you pick any value within 90 and 180, okay, any value between 90 and 180, you see that only sign will give you um, positive. The rest will give you negative, negative, negative. Take note of that. All right. So now when it is 90 degrees, say that sine is 1, tan is undefined, which we'll look at it later in elective math, cos 90 is 0. But then when we enter into the second quadrant, observe that sine is giving you positive. Can you see that? But tan is giving you negative here, and cos is also giving you negative here. So pick any value between 90 and 180. It can be 170 degrees. Only sign will give you the positive. The rest of the ratios will give you negative, negative. This is very, very important. Then when you continue the journey and you pick between 180 and 270, you realize that that one also, only tan will define positive and cos and sign will define negative. You can pick your calculator and try that. Pick your calculator and try that. Okay, now let's watch and get to the third quadrant and see what happens. So here we are still in the second quadrant, which is 175 degrees, and the angles still remain positive for only sign, right? Okay, now when it's 180, what do we see? 180, we have um, sine is 0, sine 180 is 0, tan 180 is 0, and cos 180 will give you negative 1. Okay, and then when we enter into the third quadrant, okay, when we enter into the third quadrant, picking any value between 180 and 270, you realize that only tan is giving you positive to those values, but then cos will give you negative, and then sine will give you negative. And when this one continues to the fourth quadrant, the same thing will happen between 270 and 360. Only the cos will give you the positive. All right. And so in conclusion, this is what we are saying. First quadrant, all are positive. Second quadrant, only sign is positive. Third quadrant, tan is positive. Fourth quadrant, cos is positive. You need to remember this. You need to remember this. And so acronym to help you remember, we say A, all student take calculus. All student take calculus. It will help you to remember the flow of the quadrants and their respective ratios. Or I normally say all syntax. All syntax, all syntax, and it will help me to know how to know. And it's very important because if you mix it, it will affect your result anytime you are doing calculations without using calculator. Without using calculator. Now let's talk about negative angles. Talk about negative angles. And for negative angles, all we are trying to look at is you see, ideally, we can't measure an angle and get negative. Because angle exists between, let's say, two lines, or let's say, between my um, my arms. I mean, in between arms, you can see I have an angle. And how do I measure this angle and get negative? But I mean, it doesn't make sense because there should be a space between two lines meeting at a point to get an angle. And so, if you say negative angle, it doesn't make sense because you can't measure a length and say it's um, negative. But we have negative angles, and it's simply like this measure angle from origin, which is zero, and go anti-clockwise and that is our normal flow of angles the moment you do it opposite you negate it that's all so the negative 60 degrees simply means 
the angle was measured in opposite direction. That means I started at zero here and I went 60 degrees and that became my 60 degrees. That is all. That is our negative angle. So you see all these are positive angles because they are zero anti-clockwise. And all these are negative angles because from the zero, we go opposite direction. Opposite direction. We'll go for a break. When we come back, I will show you what to think about. Something to think about. Let's go for a break. We'll be right back. vacation and desperately want to catch up with the syllabus? Salao, sila. Don't fret because Joy Learning is giving you free extra classes not only on TV but on Zoom. Did you encounter any challenges with certain topics at school? Bring them here and we will help you get it solved with no sweat, Charlie. We are offering you a one-on-one -on -one teaching and learning opportunity with our award-winning TV teachers. Is it mathematics, general science, English language or any of the elective subjects that you had challenges with? Meet our teachers for easy solutions. How do you join these free extra classes on Zoom? One, download the Zoom app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Two, create your username. Three, look for our Zoom meeting password on all our social media handles every week. And voila, you are good to join our virtual classroom from the comfort of your home. Make a date with your facilitator this Saturday at 12 noon prompt. The Joy Learning teacher and you, we don't stop learning. Joy Learning. Keep learning. you on vacation and desperately want to catch up with the syllabus? Salao, sila. Don't fret because Joy Learning is giving you free extra classes not only on TV but on Zoom. Did you encounter any challenges with certain topics at school? Bring them here and we will help you get it solved with no sweat, Charlie. We are offering you a one-on-one -on -one teaching and learning opportunity with our award-winning TV teachers. Is it mathematics, general science, English language or any of the elective subjects that you had challenges with meet our teachers for easy solutions how do you join these free extra classes on zoom one download the zoom app from the google play store or the apple app store two create your username three look for our zoom meeting password on all our social media handles every week and voila you are good to join our virtual classroom from the comfort of your home make a date with your facilitator this saturday at 12 noon prompt the joy learning teacher and you we don't stop learning joy learning Learning. Keep learning. Are you on vacation and desperate? Door learning is two years. Oh, how time flies. Today, I have been a benefactor. And students in this country and beyond are also benefactors. I appreciate even how you handle the inconveniences that came with the lockdown with the COVID, even helping students to learn even in their homes. So with your two years anniversary, we say congrats and keep up the good work you are doing. We wish you success in the future. And I know that Ghanaians are expecting more from you. Two might sound very soon in a way, but Jordan has done a lot. And on this note, I would want to wish Joy Learning a happy two-year anniversary. The whole country is now into it. They are watching Joy Learning, they are learning. So I would only say that it should continue and it should work harder than before. I hope that many more students will find it not just as an appendix, but as an integral part of their learning experiences. Let's encourage our wards or our kids to watch your learning so they learn something better because day in, day out, new things are being taught. For mathematics in particular, I look forward to the day when because of joy learning and every other such intervention, mathematics would not be feared 
It will be revered, respected, loved. I mean, the kind of subject that you don't run away from when you hear it, but you embrace it. Joy learning. Joy learning. Joy learning. Joy learning. Joy learning. Joy learning. Yeah, welcome back to SHSR, and this is revision show for senior high school, and purposely for final year students preparing for this year's 2022 WASI exams. And I'm very sure not only the final year students who are watching me, we have other students who are supposed to do this particular topic called trigonometry. They are also watching this particular lesson, and this lesson is live from um, Joel Any TV Studio. And then you can also watch it live on YouTube and on Facebook. If you go to Joy Learning TV on Facebook, Joy Learning TV on YouTube, you can get this program live. The topic has been trigonometry. That is core mass trigonometry. And this is part one of the lesson of trigonometry. Part one of the lesson of trigonometry. Now, before we went on break, I said something to think about our motivational word for the day is this life begins at the end of your comfort zone life begins at the end of your comfort zone when you are at the end of your comfort zone then life begins if you want to sit at your comfort zone you will not enjoy the life the reality of life some of you i know you are burning the candle to learn so hard some of you don't sleep you could learn you go extreme deep into the night all because you want to leave the comfort zone and achieve something. And I'm giving this as a motivation for you, the final years especially, that you need to work hard. This is your final time. No more sleeping six hours, seven hours, maximum three, four hours. You have to wake up because there's more sleep after death. Not death, by the way, you won't die, but the more sleep after was it 2022. And very soon, September 27th will come. Now let's look at special angles. Special angles. We are going to look at some angles that we normally use a lot as far as this topic is concerned. 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. We see them a lot. Cost 65, cost 30, cost 45, cost 90. How do we get those without using calculator? Before then, version of the calculator, people were still doing um, I mean, trigonometry. How did they get answers without using calculators? So we want to look at some, I mean, how we can get the values of the following um, angles without the use of calculator. Now let's start the whole deal like this. Remember we are still dealing with trigonometry, which is trigonon and metron, triangles and measurement of triangles, the size and angles that exist between them. Let's have a type of triangle called an equilateral triangle. And I'm sure you remember equilateral triangle from plane geometry, one in core mathematics. What are some of the things we know about equilateral triangle? Maybe you can start writing something for yourself. You know all sides are equal, right? Good. And you know all angles are also equal. And if all angles are equal, what would be the interior angle for each of the interior angles? I mean, what is the size of the interior angle of each of them? And I'm sure you know that to be 60, 60, 60. And so let us assume that when we measure the size of this triangle, each of the size is 2 centimeters. Actually, you can choose to start this by 5 centimeters each, or you can make it 10 centimeters each. The choice is yours. But the basic one that we want to use so that we don't reduce the fraction into the lowest term again is to use two centimeters each. And this, we said interior angle will be that. Now, when we try to draw um, a line of symmetry, we know um, an equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry. And each of the lines of symmetry will meet the baseline 
at an angle of 90 degrees. And so when that is true, realize that the line would divide the angle here into two equal parts. And so here will be 30 and here will be 30. This will meet at an angle of 90 degrees. If I decide to label this here, maybe D, then A, C, D will form a right-angled triangle. Then we come back to what we're working on, right-angled triangle. And then we can also look at it this way. A, D, B can also form right-angled triangle. So if you do that, you could write it this way. Now, these are two centimeters, two centimeters. And now the base, instead of two centimeters, because I'm dividing the base into two equal parts, I'll have one centimeter and one centimeter as well. Now, since I'm creating right angle triangle, I can find um, the angle, sorry, the side X using Pythagoras theorem. And so if I go through Pythagoras theorem, I will say the S squared here plus one square here should be equal to the hypotenuse squared. That means I'm making reference to this right angled triangle. Do you get it? Good. Or I can also make reference to this right angle triangle like this also as well. It will be the same thing. It will be the same thing. So if we do that, we can make S the subject and S will give us root of 3 because this is the same as 4, four here. This is 1 and this is S squared plus 1. So if you make S squared the subject, then we have 4 minus 1, which is 3. We take the square root of both sides. We get um, x is equal to root of 3. Actually, we should have said um, x is equal to plus or minus 3. But we are dealing with size. And we can't measure length or distance or size with negative. So the answer remains root 3. Good. So when I position root 3 in place of our x, then I can have my diagram look like this. That is enough for me to find my cos um, I'm 30 and 60 angles in reference to cos, sine, and tan. So based on this diagram, if I ask you to tell me what is cos 60? What is cos 60? Now, if you look at 60 over here, the opposite side of 60 remain this. Adjacent side remain that. Hypotenuse become that. Or if you make the reference from this side to, to be the same thing. And we know cos comes with ka, right? So adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And the same side of the 60 here is 1. If I pick it from here, it will still be 1. And so 1 over the hypotenuse, which is 2. And so we get 1 over 2. That's why cos 60 will give us half. Right now, you can pick calculator, and then you press cos 60 on the calculator. You still you get the answer to be half, or 0 0.5. Now, let's do the same thing for sine. Look at sine 60. You can press on calculator. Whatever answer you get there, you're going to get the same answer here. We know cos a uh, sine says so. All right, so means opposite side of the 60 is root 3 over the hypotenuse side, and that will give us root 3 over 2. And root 3 over 2 on calculator, you get the same value. Then we pick the tan, tan 60. Tan also says 2 adjacent, sorry, opposite over adjacent, and the opposite side of our 60 is still root 3 over the adjacent side, which is 1. And so the answer gives us root 3 over 1, which is the same as root 3. And so without using calculator, we can still know that our cos 60 is half, sine 60 is root 3 over 2, and tan 60 is root 3. Calculator will give you the same thing, but then in exams, especially with core math, they will say without using calculator, evaluate. Then in that case, they want to see something of this sort as part of your solution. Telling the examiner that you didn't use calculator, but you had your answer right. Then how do we do the same thing for 30 degrees? So again, if I pick cos 30, I will say 30 ka, ka adjacent. Adjacent of 30 is the root 3 over the hypotenuse, and that will give me over 2. So, and then if I do the same thing for sine, I get 1 over 2, because sine so, so says opposite over hypotenuse, and so I'll get 1 over 2. Then tan, will, tan 30 will be adjacent of 30, and that is root 3, over the opposite, which is 1. And so we get, um, sorry, um, adjacent, no, sorry, opposite, sorry, opposite is 1, 
over the axis. That will give us 1 over square root of 3. That should have been the answer. But we know from our said lesson, S-U-R-D, said. You remember says, we can rationalize this. And how do we do that? We multiply both the numerator and numerator by root of 3. And if you do that, 1 times root 3 will give us root 3. Root 3 times root 3 will give us 3. And so the answer comes like this. If you put tan 30 on calculator, you get the same as root 3 over 3. It will not give you 1 over root 3 because calculator understands rationalization. So it will do it nicely for you as such. And so that is how we can find 30 in terms of cosine and tan. 60 in terms of cosine and tan. How do we do this for 45? How do we get 45? They want to jump into a different type of triangle. Back to our right angle triangle. But this time around, we want to look at isosceles right angle triangle. Isosceles right angle triangle. I think it's not a strange word to you. Isosceles right angle triangle. That means that two sides of the right angle triangle are equal. So let us assume that each of the sides that are equal is one centimeter. You can try it for two centimeters. You can do it for, um, um, what do you call it, five centimeters each. I mean, it's okay. So if that is that, since these two sides are equal, and according to isosceles triangle property, it says that when two sides are equal, then their base angle ought to be equal. And so if these two sides are equal, then the two sides, their base angle will be this and that, and they ought to be equal. If here is 90 degrees, then automatically these two angles must add up to 90, and they are equal. So they should give you 45, 45. And so we can also say, okay, if that is 45, 45, and here is 1, and here is 1, we can find our x using, again, Pythagoras theorem. And if you go through that, you get your x to be root of 2. And when you put that in place, then we can have our whole diagram look like this. Let me put one centimeter here. Okay. Diagram look like this. Then we can now find our cos 45, tan 45, and sine 45. So what is cos 45? Whether the reference is to this or that, it will give you the same answer. If I use this one, cos means adjacent first over the hypotenuse. And so adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is root 2. When I rationalize this, I get back to that, and that becomes the answer. If I do the same thing for sine 45, that one too, so, so means opposite of the angle over the hypotenuse. And again, if I do that, I will get sine to be the same answer as the cos 45. Observe that when we're dealing with when we're dealing with sine and sorry 30 and 60, observe that cos 30 was the same as sine 60. Remember, we'll come back to that. And cos 60 is the same as tan uh, sorry sine 30. All right. So this they are equal. Then tan 45, tan 45, what do we have there? That is to our opposite over adjacent. Opposite of 45 is 1, adjacent also is 1. So 1 over 1 will give you 1. And you can try that on calculator. When you punch tan 45, you get 1 as your answer. So these are the fundamental um, angles that we use in trigonometry, the 30, the 60, the 45. And so we look at that. And the observation that I want you to take note of is this. Look at all this, okay? You see, cos 45 was the same as sine 45. Cos 60 is the same as sine 30, like I said. Right. Now, there's something unique that I want you to take note of. Initially, I said sine and then cos or cosine. Sine and cosine. Cosine simply means the complement of sine. Now, add 45 plus 45, you get 90. Add 60 plus 30, you get 90. 
when we pick two values or angles and they sum up to 90, like 88 degrees, like 2 degrees, they will add up to 90. Take sine of 88 and cos of 2. They should give you the same value. They should give you the same value. Or take um, cos of 88 and sine of 2. They'll give you the same value. So anytime you have two values and they add up to 90, the cos of one should be equal to the sine of the other. Very important observation. You should be able to understand it and then keep it because it will help you to solve some questions that will come your way. So in summary, this is what we have here on the screen. So if I want to know 30 and 60, then I should have 2, 1, root 3. Because when it goes this way like we did, then here could be 2 again, here will be 1. But I've taken halfway through that right um, equilateral triangle. Then if you take the isosceles right angle triangle to this and this are equal, we get our 45. So if you're able to keep this information and you put it on the paper, before you start solving it, your examiner knows you didn't use calculator in getting your values of sine 30, cos 30, sine 60, and so on and so forth. Now let's take some few examples. And very soon I'll open the phone line for you to come in with your answers to some of the questions. Then also prepare for your problem of the day. If you're able to get everything correct, special award will be given to you. Now, how do we use, sorry, how do we do um, or find the value of, let's say, um, angles that are above, um, let's say, 90? Like sine 150, sine 225, cos 180. Can we solve this without using calculator? If I put calculator on sine 150, I'll get an answer. But I want to do it without using calculator. So the question says, without using tables and calculators, find the values of sine 150. And you can see that the answer here is half. But how do we get the half? Let's see. I'll first of all have to write, draw Cartesian plane. And then try to read the angle 150, starting from the origin, which is the zero here. Then I'm going to travel 90, 150 will be somewhere here. And I know that here is 90. What did I add to 90 to get 150? That is 60. And so 60 should be here, plus 90 should give us the 150. Then after you read the actual value, the last angle that makes up with the x-axis, that acute angle, you need it. For example, this one, after knowing my 150, the remaining acute angle here will be 30 degrees. For that matter, sine, take note, sine 150 should be the same as sine that 30 degrees. Put calculator on this and try it and see. Sine 150 should give you the same as sine 30. And I put the 30 in the second quadrant. And so sine remain um, positive. For that matter, sine 30, I know from my diagram that we use, is half. So I can get the answer to be half. Let's try another one. Let's say I want to do tan 135. On calculator, I know the answer. I can get it. How will I do this without using calculator? Let's see. Once again, I'll draw Cartesian plane and read 135. It will start from the origin here. It will fall into the second quadrant. Again, 135. I need 90 plus 45 here to give me 145, 135. The remaining acute angle that mixed with the x-axis will also be 45. For that matter, I can say tan 135 should be equal to the acute angle tan 45 but then i pick tan 45 not in the third and first quadrant it is in the second quadrant and in the second quadrant every angle pick in the second quadrant only sign is positive remember we did that and so tan supposed to be negated and so that becomes our answer so it will be negative tan 45 from our diagram, we know that if you draw this, 45 is here, here is 1, here is 1. 
tan means opposite over adjacent. It should be 1 over 1, and that will give us 1. And so the answer for this is 1. Sorry, negative 1. Negative 1 because our negative must be attached to that. And once again, try calculator work. Do tan 135. You said the calculator will give you negative 1 as your answer. Then let's try this last one. Then I'll give you subsequent ones to try on your own. Then I'll open the phone line for you to call in and solve more questions for yourself. Okay, how do we do, um, how do we do cos 120? Cos 120 degrees, but it's negative. Now, if it is negative and I have my Cartesian plane here, it means that I have the origin zero and I'm moving opposite direction. Remember, we said negative angle only exists because we measure from the x axis clockwise direction instead of the anti clockwise. So I'm going this way and I'll get to it, will definitely to go beyond um, the 90 degrees and it will enter into this quadrant. And if it is 120, that means here is 90. I need um, 30 plus 90 to give me the 120. Now that here is 30, the last acute angle it makes, or the angle makes with the x axis is going to be this acute angle, which will be 60 degrees. So if that is the case, then the cos, cos negative 120 can be written as cos of the 60 degrees, cos of the 60 degrees. Then again, I have to ask myself, which quadrant did I pick the 60 from? It was picked in the third quadrant. And for third quadrant, remember we say all oh, center cos. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive. So once I've picked sign, uh, cos over there, I must negate my answer. So I have to negate this one. Then I go back to my diagram and pick 60 degrees. Here is root of 3. Here is 1. And here is 2. So cos says ka adjacent over hypotenuse. So the answer will give me negative 1 over 2. So without using calculator, I can still get the answer to be negative 1 over 2 as the answer for cos negative 1, 20. All right. I want you to keep these numbers. Okay. Okay. Let me do this one with you before the rest. I'll let you do it on your own. Now, how do we find cos square 3, 30 degrees? If I have a times a, we know the answer will give us a squared, right? Beautiful. If I have a times a times a, I get a cubed, right? Beautiful. If I have cos theta times cos theta, ideally I'm supposed to write cos theta squared, right? But that's not the case. Rather, it will be cos theta all squared. There should be a bracket. Or better still, better way of writing then we say cos square theta but if you say cos theta squared is not the same as this it's not the same again you can put in a number here let's call it 60 put 60 here and put 60 here and solve them separately you get different answers so when i have cos of an angle times itself it is written as cos square then the angle so I can say cos square 60 degrees, sine square 70 degrees. That means I'm dealing with sine 70 times sine 70. Good. So that is very important. So it means that this simply means I'm doing cos 330, then whatever the answer, I square it. Simple. So now let's read cos 330 on a Cartesian plane from the origin here, positive. So we go anti-clockwise. 30, um, 130, sorry, 330 will go beyond 90, 180, 270, and it will come here. It means now I have 270. What will I add to 270 to get 330? And that will be 60 degrees. So it means it will come up to 60 degrees here like this. So 60 plus, 60 plus, 90 plus, 90 plus, 90 will give me 330, right? Then the last acute angle to the x axis is 30 degrees. For that matter, cos 330 should be the same as cos 30 degrees. That is what it means. 
again, cos 330 is the same as cos 30 degrees. Now, because I picked 30 degrees in the fourth quadrant, fourth quadrant, remember we said all oh, center cos. Cos is positive, so the answer must remain positive. And what is cos 30? Now we know cos 30 is root 3 over 2 from our diagram. So it means that this is going to be written as um, cos 30 is root of 3 over 2. Then I will square the answer. And that will give me root 3 times root 3 will give me just 3. And then when I square 2, I get 4. So the answer becomes 3 over 4. 3 over 4 becomes the answer. All right. So it's positive. So based on this, I want you to write this particular equation down. And then you solve it. Do cos 225 squared plus sine 225. And when you do it very well, your answer will come as 1. Do that. You math students will understand this because it's one of the identities Cos square theta plus sine square theta will always give you one. Then do the same thing for this one too. And if you do it very well, you get your final answer to be root two. All right. So what I want us to do next is to solve other past questions that has come in direction of this. Then I open the phone line for you to bring in your answers. Okay. Now, if I have this question here, Without using tables and calculators, simplify this. This was a pure pass question I picked. And how will you do this without using tables, without using calculators? So let's try this together and see. Now, what I have to do, because I'm not using tables and calculators, I'll first show how I had, how I'm going to get sine 45, tan 30, cos 45, or sorry, tan 45, and then cos 60. So I'll first have to draw um this we remember that we have one here one here 45 is here here is root of two then i also draw the equilateral triangle we know we, we put 30 here we put one here here is 60 and here is two and this became root of three they meant to draw this two on the diagram even if you use a calculator to get your answers i mean you are safe because this shows that an evidence that with our calculator we can still get our answer. So what is sine 45? Then I go to this side. Sine 45 is here. Sine says so. Remember, opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to get 1 over root of 2. Let's leave it like that for now. We'll rationalize it. Or we can go straight by rationalizing it so that we get our answer to be um, root of 2 over 2. So let me do that straight away and say root of 2, since we understand it, that will be root of 2 over 2. That is our sine 45. Then tan 30. Tan 30, we come here. Tan 30. 30 is to our opposite 1 over adjacent root 3. And that also will give us um, Opposite by that means it will be root of 3 over 3. So we put in our plus there. Right. Then we divide everything by tan 45. And tan 45, you come back to this place again. Remember, this is 90 degrees. So opposite over adjacent. So that would be 1 minus cos 60. Cos 60 is here. And that is ka adjacent 1 over hypotenuse 2. And that will give us half. Then we simplify using a normal um, set um, simplification. So the numerator, I can write it as root of 2 over 2 plus root of 3 over 3. Then I will say divided by, divided by to make it easier for me to see what I'm drawing. And it will flow divided by root of over 2. Now, what is the LCM here? Of course, um, since the numerators are all having... Um, 2, 2, I don't even need to do LCM because I can only add the uh, numerators and say, um, sorry, 
I can add a numerators, but then because they are unlike terms, I will just say root of 2 plus root of 3, all divided by 2, then divided by 1 minus half is negative half. Oh, sorry. Sorry. 1 minus half is half. Then we can write again. Let's move to this side. And we can say 2 root. Oh. Root of 2 plus root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. That is, we change the division to multiplication, and so we reciprocate the next one. And then we say that the 2 here can cancel this, leaving our way square root of 2 plus root of 3 as our final answer. And so with that using calculator, this is what you will do to get your final answer. Oh, sorry for that answer. It's not right. Again, without using tables and calculators, I want you to solve this question. And this time around, I'm going to open the phone lines for you to bring in your answers to the following questions I'm going to let you go through. So we have, without using tables and calculators, find 2 times 60 degrees plus cos 30 degrees sin over sine 60. You can avoid your calculator and try using it with our calculator. And let's see the answer you will get. And the four lines still remain 0302-211-705-0302-211-706. Again, the phone line remains 0302 211-705-0302-211-706. You can call in and then present your answer to the following questions I'm going to give you. This is first one. I'll give you a second. I'll give you a third. Then I'll bring the problem of the day. Then we'll look at the solution to that. And then we'll say goodbye for today. So the lines are open now. We have 0302 So whilst you are solving it, I'm also trying to give you the, I'm also going to solve it. And then we'll look at the answer together. Then the subsequent ones, you can bring your answer. So what is tan 60? Then tan 60, I can just do something like this. Okay, let me do this way. 60 is here. 30 is here, this is 2, this is 1, this is root of 3. So 60 simply means um, tan twa, opposite is root of 3. Opposite is root of 3 over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent and opposite is root 3 over adjacent is 1. So we get that. And then so we are multiplying that by 2 because we are saying tan that plus cos 30 and cos 30 is ka adjacent of 30 is root of 3 over hypotenuse which is 2 all divided by all divided by sine 60 and 60 again will be so opposite root of 3 over um okay so so is opposite sorry yeah, so it's opposite over hypotenuse, so over 2. Root of 3 over 2. When you simplify this, like I've done right now, you realize that your answer will come close as um, 2 root 3 plus um, 3 over 2, or times 2 over root of 3. And if you do your simplification very well, you realize that your answer will come as 5. All right. So I think I have a space here so I can do it. I, wanted, I thought I was not having space. So again, hello. Hello. 
Your name and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is Ingridin Rehana, calling from Tamale. Please come, come again with your name. Nuridin Rehana, calling from Tamale. Tamale, Nuridin. All right. Nuridin, what do you have for us? So I have the answer to question four. You had four? Mm. Your answer came as four. Oh, okay. All right. The yeah. answer came as four. That's the good. Question four. The answer for question four, which was um, two times 60 plus or 30, all divided by 60. Yes, yes. That's the question we have on the screen right now, right? Okay. Good. I had my answer to be five root three all over three. Five root three all over, all over three. three. Oh, okay. Okay, now let's let's conclude it and see how the answer is going to be like. That is very good. Um, thanks for calling. So okay. noted. Uh, Tamale, which school? Tamale Islamic. Oh, okay. Senior high. Tamale Islamic Senior High. Mm -hmm. Nuridin. Okay, Nuridin from Tamale. I'm taking note of your name. All right. Thanks so much for calling. So as you keep solving questions, we'll take note of you and then we'll give you a special package from Joy Learning, right? All right. So once again, we have two into bracket tan 60. What is tan 60 from our previous lesson? We can say tan 60 will give us just root 3. Salama 2. Hello, Salama 2. Yes, please. Samatu, where are you calling from? Please, I'm calling from Techiman. Techiman, wow, beautiful. Samatu, what do you have for us? Please, I have the answer for the question of the day, the second question. Yes, and what is your answer? So, the, the question of the day, the second question. Uh -huh. The first one was asking for the new oh. angle with the leather mix. Sala Salamatu, wait, wait, wait with the answers to the um problem of the day if you do that so okay well may, let, let, let me keep your answer down so that if you don't call again and you get it correct we we'll still know that you were the one who, who, who had the answer so okay. what is your answer for okay. the first one i gave you so two the questions there mm -hmm. so, so i'm giving answer for the second question the so, letter five meters long okay okay so the first the the i was asking for the new angle with the the ladder mixed with the ground okay and that is and it is correct to two significant figures beautiful and it is 1.71 meters. 1.71 1 me meters. meters. Beautiful. And then the second part. You know, there, there are question number two. There are two sub questions. One is to find the angle. It says, sorry, I made a mistake. The second, the, the angle with the ladder mixed with the ground. The, the ground, Quite beautiful. It was 33 degrees. 33 degrees. Beautiful. Yes. And then the distance it moved away from. And then the distance will correct to two significant figures will also give you 2.5 meters. 2.5 meters. meters. Beautiful. So I'm keeping your answer for now. Please tell me from one. Hey, that's beautiful. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. This one's a special thumb up for you, okay? Um, Salamat, which school? Which school? Please, I attend school at Azari at Kumasi. Kumasi Ahamedia. Azaria. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not getting the name of the school. Azaria. Oh, okay. 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 So, um, but now you are, you are currently at Techiman. Yes. Because you are, you, are, you are on vacation. I'll go to school. Sure. Beautiful. So, work on the first one. And let's okay. see whether you can get your answer correct. Okay. And we go. Thanks so much for calling. Salama to calling from Techiman. Beautiful. All right, so we're trying to get an answer for this. And so this plus, plus cos 30. And cos 30, we know cos 30 is going to give us, um, from our previous lesson, it means um, concept, rather. We had this. All divided by, all divided by sine 60. And sine 60 is going to give us, oh, sorry, I'm doing divided by doing divided by and sine 60 also will give us um sine 60 
I want to do it so fast because I don't have time. 3 over 2. All right. So if we do LCM here, which is 2, we can say, okay, here is over 1. So 1 divides that and we get 2. So we get 4 root of 3 plus 2 goes into 2. 1 times that will give us root of 3 as well. Then divided by, or we can say times 2 over root of 3. And again, if you add 4 root 3 plus root 3, 4 root 3 plus root 3 will give us 5 root 3. This can cancel this, leaving out with over root of 3. And if the root 3 cancel root 3, our answer comes as 5. And uh, Nuruddin from Tamale said 5 root 3 over 3. Forgotten that the 3 here will cancel. And so that is the answer. Okay, so um, the four lines still remain 0, 3, 0, 2, 2, 1, 1, 7, 0, 5, 0, 3, 0, 2, 2, 1, 1, 7, 0, 6. If your answer is ready for this question that you see on the screen, the subsequent one, or even the problem of the day, you are at liberty to bring your answer so that we can record it. And when we get there, we will all look at the answer together. Right. So look at the question on the screen. Find the length BC in the triangle below. Leave your answers or your answer correct to one decimal place. So I want you to solve this. Remember this one, you don't need calculator. You have to know the equation. They do call before your calculator can come in to give you the answer. But you can use calculator for it actually because you're supposed to get uh, maybe the inverse or something. So, if your answer is ready, you can call in and then present your solution. And again, you can do it with that of this one on the screen or the problem of the day. I'll take note of your answer. Then we see. How do we find the length BC? And correct our answer to one decimal place. One. Hello, Barikisu. Oh, sorry, we've lost Barikisu. Barikisu, try again. Try again. Okay, the line still remains 0302211705. Again, 0. 3022117060. You can call in and bring your answer to the question that you see on the screen. Okay, whilst we are waiting for callers to bring their solution, we have to still be solving it because we still have to meet the time. All right, so here, what do we see? You want to find BC. Let me call the BC, let's say X or Y, or let's just keep it as BC. Fine. And BC to the, re I mean, reference to the angle theta, BC will serve as adjacent. And the side over here will represent opposite. And we know we are dealing with opposite and adjacent. And that is tan. So we can say tan 62 is equal to opposite 25 over adjacent, which is BC or X. So if I do cross multiplication, okay. I'm not done with the solution, so give me your answer. Your name. I'm not done with the solution, so give me your answer. Your name. Hello? Hello, please, your name and where you're calling from. My name is Andrews. Andrews. Please, my name is Andrews. Okay, Andrews, which school? I'm calling from Ganata. Ganata. All right. Ganata. Yes, sir. All right. So, what is the answer to the question on the screen? Oh, I can't hear your answer. 
I think I'm having a challenge with your line. Hello. Hello. Place your name and where you're calling from. Um, I'm Kendra, calling from Kendra. Kendra. I remember this name. <laughs> yes, I remember this name. Kendra, what is the answer to the question? Um, I would like to answer the question of the day, the first one, and after I was answer the second one. Okay, so question one, your answer. Okay, so I use the um, Pythagorean identity. Beautiful. Um, that the sine of the power 2 x plus the cos 2 x is equal to 1. Sure. And since uh, cos x is equal to 3 over 5, uh -huh. you get uh, 9 over 25 mm -hmm. plus the sine of power 2 x, which is equal to 1. Mm -hmm. And so when you solve this, um, you get um, x to be either um, 4 over 5 or negative 4 over 5. So that's your final answer, right? Um, but, uh, okay, when you solve everything, what is the final answer? Let me write it down. Okay, since you are giving um, the, that the angle is in the first quadrant, sure. and then you know the cosine value to be. Oh, Kendra, sorry, sorry, sorry. Kendra, when you come again, give me the answer straight so that I can write it down so that in case I lose you, I still know that you've given me an answer, okay? For the explanation later, I'll let you give me detailed explanation to that so that I don't lose your marks entirely. All right, so we're still solving this question when Kendra called in. Now, when we do cross multiplication here, we're going to have x tan. 62 is equals to 25 and because i'm making x the subject i divide both sides by tan 62 and so that x becomes 25 divided by tan 62. now calculator can do the rest for you just put in 25 divided by tan 62 and if you do that your answer will come will come as 13.3 13.3 so tan um 25 divided by tan 62 will give you 13.3, right. Right, I have another question on the screen. You can look at it, solve it, and tell me your answer. Given that cos 32 is equal to sine into bracket 5m minus 12. m lies between 0 and 90, meaning n is in the first quadrant. What is the value of m? What is the value of m? The line still remains 0302211705, 0302 you can call in and bring your answer or you can also tell us the problem of the day, the solution to the question. So cos 32 is equal to sine into bracket 15m minus 12. I want to see your solution to this question. In solving this question, you have to apply the principle that I've mentioned earlier, and it will help you solve this. When I was asking you to make observations of tan of an angle, sorry, cos of an angle and sine of an angle, we saw something that if I say cos 30, it should be the same as sine 60, or cos 2, the same as sine 88. That concept can help you solve this question. So bring your answer and let's see. All right. So whilst we are waiting for, uh, we have a technical problem with our lines, but I'm sure we'll get you through. So whilst we're waiting for you to call, let's try solving it. Let's try solving it because I still have to beat the tie. To beat the tie. Okay. So cos 32 is equal to sine 15 m. Hello, Fred. Yeah. Fred, 
Wisku. Hello, Fred Wisku. Okay, I can't get. Okay, Fred, your your answer to the question on the screen, the question number two. Oh, sorry, I lost. We're having problem with our, our our lines, but you have to pardon. I just keep trying. You 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 get it. I know some of you are trying so hard, but it's not coming through. But I know you you surely get it. So keep trying. All right. So Fred, sorry for that. I pray that you come back again with your answer. All right, so let's keep solving the question. So cos 32 is equal to sine 15m, uh, 5m minus 12. We learned that sine 30 should be the same as cos 60. Or cos maybe 15 should be the same as sine um let's say 60 um no so rather 75 75 plus 15 will give us 90. hello emmanuel yes emmanuel how are you please i'm fine great emmanuel the school yeah, i have the answer to be 12.1 degrees the, the one on the screen right now 12.1 degrees. Yes, sir. All right. What about the problem of the day? Do you have an answer to that one? The problem of the day. Was it the first question? No, that one, I'm, we've already put it on the social media I mean, platform. It's on the um, Facebook. Um, you know, I, I don't have that one. Oh, okay. Don't worry. When we get there, I'll show, the, I'll show you the question. Then you try it, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for calling in with your answer. So, Emmanuel... Um, said his answer for the M is 12.1 degree. Now let's see whether Emmanuel had it correct or not. Okay, so we're going through the solution and then we said we want to use this concept, this very concept, to handle this question. So what it means is that if I have cost 32, then cost 32 should be... Um, Whatever value of 32 plus the value of the sign over here should add up to give you 90. Because they should be equal. So that if it is 15, 15 and then sign 75, they should be the same. And so we will say that 32 should be, I mean 32 plus 5m minus 12 should give us 90. Because cost of an angle should be sign of the complement of that angle and the complement of 32 must be a number that must add up to 32 to give you 90 and the 32 complement is the 5m minus 12 and so when you add the two you should get 90 so making m the subject we can say 5m is equals to now 32 minus 12 will give us 20 so plus 20 and so we get 90 if i do um Hello, Miracle. Hello, sir. Miracle. Good evening. School. Good evening. Miracle, we school. St. Joseph Senior High School. St. Joseph. St. Joseph. In the choir. The yes. Senior High. Which yes. question are you answering? The problem of the day or the one on the screen? The one on the screen. Beautiful. So, what is your answer? So, I had the view of M to be 14 degrees. 14 degrees and that is so beautiful that is so beautiful 14 degrees is correct is correct do you have answer to the problem of the day um please i didn't in early so oh I so you didn't know the question okay very soon so we keep watching i'll bring the question very soon for you to look at it and then you see if you can solve it okay. so i've taken note of your name if you solve that one when you get it correct trust me you get something from joy learning thank you so much for calling thank you sir. all right so uh, miracle had it right by saying the answer is 14 and it's true that when we have 5m is equals now 20 moves here to subtract as 70 and you're going to get 5m is equals to 70 so m becomes 70 divided by 5 and when you do that calculation you get your m to be 14 and that is why M is 14. So, Miracle, thank you 
for getting the answer right. All right, I'll skip this one and I'll go skip this one too because I don't have time. Now let's look at the problem of the day. Of the day. So I want to pop up the question one on the screen. So those of you who have not seen it on our social media, try as fast as you can um, pick the information cos x is 3 fifths and then x lies between 0 and 90 without using tables and calculators you want to see the value of tan 3 tan x all divided by 2 sine x plus 3 cos x that is the question number one then the question number two that is a word problem here okay uh, i think i have to do something quickly here Question number two is here. It says that a ladder five meters long leaned against a vertical wall at an angle of 70 degrees to the ground. The ladder slips down the wall two meters. Find to two significant figures the new angle which the ladder makes with the ground the distance the ladder has slipped back on the ground from its original position and so these are the two problem of the day it has been with you for the past one week normally what we do is that we'll bring out the question and put it on air for people to look at it and solve and so always monitor the joy learning i mean um, social media, or you can go to the site, I mean, www.joylearningtv.com. You can get all these information earlier before the D day. So, Rashid. Yes. Rashid, how are you? I'm fine, you. Great. Rashid, which school? TI Amas. TI Amas. Amas. Okay, so what do you have for us? Uh, I had my answer to the question cos 32 equal to sine 5m minus, minus 12. 12. Okay, what was your answer? 14. 14, that is beautiful. That was the exact answer that came up. Very beautiful. I'm sure you've struggled for reaching us. I mean, the way, because yes. uh -huh, I know, sorry for. For, 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 for that. And um, do you have answers to any of the questions for problem of the day? No. You've not solved it. So I want to I, challenge you. I don't right. have that question. Okay. So you can see on the screen right now. Yes. I want to challenge you the question number one. See okay. if you can tackle it and then break it and give me an answer. So okay. that you bring your answer in again. Okay. All right. But you've done well for the first question that you had is correct as 14 meters, as centimeters. That is very true. All right. So try it. Thank you for calling. Thank you so much. All right. So we are still looking at the problem of the day. And again, we have the first question on the screen. Second question, I've already shown you the question and um, I can't be moving up and down. So if you don't have it quickly, you can go to the website and you get the question over there. But then the first question is on the sc screen. I want you to bring your answer to this question first. Then we all look at it together. We go to the second one. Then we look at it. We, I remember that um, Salama 2 from Techiman called in and then he she brought the second part of the question and then i'm sure salama to wherever you are now you are trying to get this particular answer as well so that i can put them together for you michael hello michael how are you great michael which school Remper, good michael which of the answers do you have now for the problem of the day, the question one, I have an answer to be 21 17. Take your time, 20. 21 17. 
20 on 17. That is your answer for the first one. What about the second one? The second one, I've not finished it. You've not finished it. Okay. All right. Beautiful. So that is your answer. So you are competing with Salamatu. Salamatu brought the second one. He didn't bring the first one. You have brought the first one. You don't have your second one. So let's see. Go through it and let's see. Can you show me the height? Can you cut the second one on this? Um, yes, I will. I will. I will do that. I will do that. Okay. So you you keep watching. You, you you see the second question very soon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I wish we could have the two questions together, but I didn't want to have the font size small, so I didn't put them together. So I brought the first question here, and then the second question is there. All right, so let's try to solve the first one so that we can get the opportunity of looking at the second question as well. And we'll see whether those who have tendered their answers will have it correct. So according to the question, um, cause X has been defined and x also has been positioned that means it's supposed to be in the first quadrant and so what we are going to do we know that in the first quadrant okay if s is here then we draw something like this now we know that if we say cos x is 3 over 5 then and we know cos says ka that means adjacent is dividing hypotenuse. So if I put x here, then the adjacent of x is 3. Hypotenuse is 5, so I can put 5 here. If I go through Pythagoras theorem and put a variable here, maybe let's call it a, and I go through Pythagoras theorem, I will get here to be 4. So you can try that, and you get the same answer, you get 4. So if that is the case, now let's go to the next page to create more space for this so remember i've just indicated this is x and we have three here we have five here we have four here now the question says we should find three tan x so i'm going to do three times tan x and tan x means tan says twa okay opposite over adjacent opposite is four adjacent is three so opposite hello hello Please, your name and where you are calling from. Yes, I'm called Bernadette. Bernadette. Yes. Please. Okay. Which school? Kumasi Girls. Kumasi Girls. Which class? I'm in class five. All right. So, which of the answers are you providing now? Uh, please, um, the problem for the day. Question sure. one. Question one. Your answer. I got fifty-three on twenty. Fifty-three. 73 on 20. 73 on 20. That is for question 1. 73 on 20. This is 73? No, 23. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 23 on 20. Beautiful, yes, beautiful. Yes. What about the second one? Do you have the second one? No, I'm not done solving that one. Okay, okay. So, I have three students currently with the problem of the day and the moment i bring out the final answer when you call that one you are you i mean you, you've lost it then the subsequent one you may also try that so we have salama too we have a uh, miracle but no miracle has intended yeah. michael from prempe and then benedict also from kumasi girls so these are the people who have their answers currently at stake so what is tan x? Tan x tan is twa. So opposite of tan is four, adjacent is three. So we are going to get four divided by three. Then everything divided by two sine x and sine s is so. So so okay. So opposite is four. Hypotenuse uh, uh, sorry. Opposite is four. Hypotenuse is five. Yeah. Then plus three times cos x and cos says ka. And that has already been given, so that one is here. So you just have to just pick three on five. And remember, each of them will be positive because we are picking it from the first quadrant. That's why the question gave you that zero less than x less than 90. That means x lies between zero and 90. And zero and 90 means we are in the first quadrant. All the ratios are positive. So we have to remain, I mean, we have to keep all the answers positive. 
Now let's simplify this. The first one is going to give us um, 3 will cancel 3 here, so we have 4 here, divided by, um, this is going to be 8 on 5 plus 9 on 5. So I'm going to do 4 divided by, let's put it this way into bracket, 8 plus 9 will be 17 divided by 5. Then we have 4 times we reciprocate, so 5 divided by 17, and that will be 20 on 17. So 20 on 17 is our answer, which means that Michael from Prempe had it correct. So for first question, you can see only one answer is correct now. So we can say 20 over 17, or you can say one whole number, 3 over 17. Then question number two, I'll give you some few minutes. Those of you who have not solved it and you want to try it, I'll give you some few minutes. And um, you bring your answer. And let's see whether you can add up to what you have already here. Ladder 5 meters long lanes against a vertical wall at an angle of 70 degrees to the ground. The ladder slips okay, down the wall. So I'll show you a demonstration of how it happened. All right, Emmanuel. Yeah, Emmanuel, are you? Uh, yes. Good, good, good. The first question. I got a fourteen. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, beautiful. Uh, and and the second one, the, the second one too. They given that I got. Uh, the answer to my question is five point forty seven. Which one? Is yeah. it is it a problem of the day? The problem of the day, the second question. The second question. Hey, so hey, I'm interested in that one. Yes. Yes, I got. I got five, five point. 5.47. Yes, please. Good. For, for, for the, for the um, is it the angle that it's mixed with the ground? Yes, yes. yes, please. Good. And then the distance it slips down the ground the from ground. the original position is what? Oh, sorry, Emmanuel. Emmanuel has turned out the first answer. That is a question two, Roman number one as 5.74 degrees and then that of the second question i'm sure he'll come back and give us the answer to that all right so the line still remains 0302 what is your answer to the second question of the day that's the problem of the day of the day. I'm still giving you time for you to bring out. I don't want to go through, it, through the solution now. Emmanuel, thanks for coming back. Thank you so much for calling in again. Oh, this is a different Emmanuel. Hello, Emmanuel. This is a different Emmanuel. Okay, so um, which school, Emmanuel? Bishop Herman College. Come again. Bishop Herman College. Bishop Herman College. Good. Your answer? For question number one, I got four terms. Question number you had what? Question number one, I had four terms. Fourteen. Yeah. Okay. And question number two. Okay. Yeah. The question number two is what we see on the screen now. Question number two, I. Uh huh. Five point seven four. Five point seven four degrees, and then the. Good. And then the second one, which is the distance, let us slip back. Sorry, Emmanuel from Bishop Hema Senior High. 
Yeah, sorry for that. And I'm sure you try again and come out with your second part of the question to see. Right. So I'm still giving you time to come out with your answer. I'm much particular about this very question. It's quite tricky, but I know you can solve it. I know very well you can solve it. So I don't want to rush in bringing the answer. Keep trying it. The ladder five meters long. The ladder is now five meters long. And it was laying against the wall. So let's say there is the wall. And there is the ground. The ladder is somewhere here. Against the wall. Okay, that's the ladder. And the ladder makes an angle to the vert I mean an angle to the ground, which is 70 degrees. Now this ladder slips down the wall two meters down. That means from where it is, it came down two meters. That is all the question. You have to find the new angle because the minute it slips down, the angle will reduce because it's supposed to be 70 and it's standing, I mean, like this. So when it slips down, the angle will go less. And then from its original position to where it slips. Hello, Salama, too. Hello, sir. From Tetiman, right? Yes, please. Beautiful. Tetiman, so. The first one, I had the answer, but I was doubting. Oh, Salama, oh. You, should have, you should have tried. You should have tried. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do you still have the second, I mean, your, your second question, 33 degree for the angle it makes with the ground? Yes. And then 2.5, the distance it slips yes. backwards. You still have that, yes. right? Okay. So let's see whether that will be right for you. Okay. If you had brought the first one and this one to go for you, then it means you are true. But okay. it's good. I'm happy you are learning. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Which class? Okay. I think I've lost Salamatu. That's good. Salamatu, thank you so much for calling. Right, so I was trying to explain. I'm still giving you some clues to the question so that you can quickly submit your answer. So the object or the ladder slipped down. Hello? Hello? Oh, I've lost. All right, so let's, let's come up with a solution and see what happens. Let's, let's look at, so like this what we, so this is the ladder, and it's five meters long. It makes an angle of 70 degrees, and it slips down and makes, down the, I mean the, I mean the, the wall two meters down, and this original angle, we know that already, and it makes a new angle of theta, which we don't know. That's what the question is asking us to calculate for. And yeah, so um, we want to find the angle theta here and this, right? So what I want to now that I've given you the clue, now you've seen the picture of the whole thing. I'm giving the final answer, which is going to give you 33 degrees, and Salama to had it correct. And the other answer will give you 2.5. Now, what I want you to do is I'm going to let you solve this question on your own to see whether you're going to get your answer. Right, my time is up, so keep this particular work until we meet another time. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Evans Oday, your facilitator, and get the rest of the night. Goodbye.